Welcome to Module 8, Fiber Optic Cabling. Once again, I'm Ted Chandler, your CIS instructor for this online course on network cabling systems. In this module, you will learn to first identify the advantages of optical fiber compared to copper cable. Then you'll be able to explain multi-mode versus single-mode optical fiber, discuss how fiber optic cables are constructed, and explain the optimum wavelengths for fiber optic cables. You'll be able to explain the performance of optical fiber cables. And finally, you'll be able to identify the optical fiber testing instrumentation. Now, in its simplest form, fiber optics is a medium for carrying information from one point to another in the form of light pulses. Unlike the copper form of signal transmission media, fiber optics transmission is not electrical in nature and therefore has many advantages. However, transmission of signals over fiber is more complex in its operation than standard copper media because electrical signals must be converted to optical pulses then reconverted back to electrical signals. The light source flashes light pulses on and off in the same pattern as the information that is being encoded for transmission. The light pulses are then reflected off the fiber's boundary between the core and the cladding until the light pulses get back to their intended destination, as shown in these slides. The basic fiber optic communication link consists of a transmitting device either a laser or light emitting diode or L, uh, LED laser that generates the light signals. Two optical f uh, fiber strands, one for transmission and one for receiving, carry the light from one end to the other end in the link or channel. And then a receiver accepts the light signals that are, have been transmitted. Take a few minutes to study this important slide. The benefits of fiber optics compared to copper uh, cable include, first, note the two strands of fiber, one for transmission and one for receiving, typically can carry 20,000 two-way voice conversations in the long-haul PSTN network. That is the equivalent of about 50, 400 pair copper cable. Other features of fiber compared to copper cable include long distance signal transmission, large bandwidth, lightweight and small diameter, non-conductivity, security, and without question, it's designed for future application needs. This slide shows how optical fiber is constructed. Note the core is the central region of an optical fiber through which light is transmitted. It is considered to be what's called an optical waveguide. The cladding is the material surrounding the core of an optical waveguide. The cladding must have a lower index of refraction to keep the light in the core. The coating is a flexible PVC type material put on the fiber during the draw process to protect it from the environment and handling. Now two varieties of optical fiber cable are commonly used in both uh, in LANs today, single mode and multi mode. Single mode is also used in MANs and WANs. Single mode fiber is an optical waveguide or a fiber core in which the signal travels in one mode or light path. The single mode fiber has a small, small core diameter, typically 8.3 micron. The cladding size is 125 micron. By the way, the diameter of your hair is approximately 7, 70 micron to give you an idea of how small the optical fiber core and cladding diameter really is. With single mode optical fiber, a fabricated laser which transmits a single or coherent light pulse is used. Multi-mode fiber is, 
It is an optical waveguide in which light travels in multiple modes or rays. Typical multimode core size is larger than single mode and comes in either 62.5 micron or 50 micron core diameter. The mode can be thought of as, a, as bundles of light rays or pulses of light representing an on a state uh, for one in binary language that enters the fiber. Light rays enter at the core at various angles in multimode fiber because the multimode light pulses or rays that are generated by a LED or light emitting diode laser uh, power source and, and it's not nearly as coherent as single mode. The cladding on both single mode and multimode is 125 micron diameter. And like measuring copper cable performance, attenuation, a loss of signal strength, is a key measurement in optical cable performance. Note that when multiple rays are transmitted through the core of a multimode fiber, the resulting light pulses could have a condition called jitter. This is a problem because the receiving electronics may find it difficult to distinguish between ones and zeros. Jitter is called by, caused by light rays arriving at the receiving end at different times. Fiber manufacturers often build in different rings of uh, internal refraction in the core to slow down or speed up the uh, speed, uh, speed of light. Single mode does not have this problem because it has a single coherent light beam, as I mentioned. Also, as I said, the core is the central region of an optical fiber through which light is transmitted. The cladding is the material surrounding the core of the optical waveguide. The cladding must have a lower index of refraction to keep the light in the core. The coating is a material put on the fiber during the draw process to protect it from the environment and handling. Recall that I said in a previous slide that single-mode fiber has a small, small core diameter, typically 8.3 micron. Multi-mode fiber has a core size of 62.5 micron or 50 micron. The cladding on both single-mode and multi-mode is 125 micron diameter. I'm repeating this because it's, it's important that you understand when you select fiber, whether you select single mode and multi mode, and how you tell the difference, specifically by the core diameter differences. Fiber optic cables are optimized for a specific wavelength of light. The wavelength of a particular light source is the length measured in nanometers or billions of a second between wave peaks in a typical light wave from the light source. Although the comparison is not exact, you can think of a wavelength as, a, as being similar to a Hertz frequency cycle discussed for copper cables. Specifically, wavelength is a reciprocal of frequency. Typically, optical fibers use wavelengths between 800 and 1550 nanometers, depending on the light source. Silica-based glass is most transparent at these wavelengths, and therefore the transmission is more efficient, or less attenuation, in this range. For a reference, visible light, the light that which you can see, has wavelengths in the range between 400 and 700 nanometers. Most fiber optic light source operate in the infrared range beyond 700 nanometers up to 1550 nanometers. So that's outside of the visible wavelength. That's why you never want to look directly into an operating fiber optic link. Note that there is significantly less attenuation loss at 1300 nanometers than at 850 nanometers. Specifically, Multimode fiber operates at both 850 nanometers and 1300 nanometers, while single mode fiber operates at 1310 nanometers and 1550 nanometers. 
The buffer is the component that provides the most protection for the optical fiber inside the cable. The buffer does just what its name implies. It buffers or cushions the optical fiber from the stresses and forces of the outside world. Optical fiber buffers are categorized as either tight or loose buffered cave, uh, tube. With tight buffering, a protective layer, usually a 900 micron thermoplastic covering, is directed over the coating of each optical fiber in the cable. Tight buffering make the entire cable more durable, easier to handle, and easier to terminate. This slide shows tight buffering in a single uh, single fiber or simplex construction. Tight buffered cables are most often used indoors because expansion and contraction caused by outdoor temperature swings can exert great force on a cable. Tight buffered designs tend to transmit the uh, force to the fiber strands which can damage the strand or inhibit its transmission ability. Some specially designed tight buffering uh, our, uh, cables are used for either exclusive outdoor use or a combination of indoor and outdoor installations. A loose tube buffer, on the other hand, is essentially a tough plastic pipe about uh, an eighth of an inch in diameter. One or several coated fibers can be placed inside the tube depending on the, uh, the cable design. The, the, the tube is then filled with a protective substance, usually a water blocking gel to provide cushioning, strength and protection from the elements. Sometimes water block powders and tapes are used to waterproof the cable, either as a replacement for the gel or in addition to it. A loose tube design uh, commonly uh, is always used in outdoor installations. Multiple tubes can be placed in a cable to accommodate a large, large fiber count for high-density communication areas such as large city or trunk lines for long-distance telecommunications. This slide shows a loose buffered fiber optic cable. Notice that the cable shown uses water blocking materials. Fiber optic cables require additional support to prevent breakage of the delicate optical fibers within the cable. That's where the strength members come in. The strength member of a fiber optic cable is the part that provides a ten a additional tensile or pull strength. The most common strength member in optical fiber is aramid yarn, a popular type of which is Kelvar, the same material found in bulletproof vests. Thousands of strands of this material are placed in a layer called a serving around the tight buffered fibers in the cable. When pulling on the cable, tensile forces are transferred to the aramid yarn and, and not uh, to the fiber. Kelvar, Kevlar is extremely durable, so cables that use it require special cutting tools called Kevlar scissors, and it cannot be cut with ordinary cutting tools. Loose tube fiber optic cables sometimes have a strand of either fiberglass or steel wire as strength members. These can be placed around the perimeter of a bundle of optical fibers within a single cable or the strength member can be located in the center of the cable uh, with the individual optical fibers clustered around it. As with aramid yarn in tight buffered cables, tensile strength is sometimes bored by strength members, not uh, the buffered tubes or the fiber, uh, fiber strands. Cables can be divided into three categories based on the number of optical fibers. They are simplex cables, duplex cables, and multi-fiber cables. A simplex fiber optic cable has only one tight buffered optical fiber inside the cable jacket, which I showed you several slides ago. Because simplex cables only have one fiber inside them, usually a thick strength member and a thicker jacket make the cable easier to handle. Duplex cables, in contrast, have two tight buffered optical fibers inside a, a single jacket, like the cable on the, on the left uh, of the slide. 
The most popular use for duplex fiber optic cables is as a fiber optic LAN backbone cable because all LAN connections need a transmission fiber and a reception fiber. Duplex cables have both inside, uh, have both inside a single cable and running a single cable is of course easier than running two. One type of fiber optic cable is called a duplex cable for, techni for technicality, it, uh, it, it is uh, not one. This cable is known as zip cord. Zip cord is, readily, uh, is really using two simplex cables bonded together into a single flat optical fiber cable. It's called a duplex because there are two optical fibers, but it's not really duplex because the fiber are covered by a common jacket. Finally, multimode cables contain more than two optical fibers in one jacket. Multi-fiber cables have anywhere from three to 288 fi uh, optical uh, fibers in them. More often than not, however, the number of fibers in a multi-fiber cable will be multiple of two because, as discussed earlier, LAN applications need a send and a receive optical fiber for each connection. Fiber optic connectors are unique in that they must make both an optical and mechanical connection. They must have the fiber internally aligned almost perfectly in order to make this optical connection. The two most used types of optical fiber connectors are the SC, or the square shape, uh, which I'm showing you on the top slide, and the ST for single twist, which is the one on the bottom. The SC is a simple push-pull uh, type of connection in order to uh, install and remove the connector, and the ST is a 90-degree twist for installation and removal. Another connector type is the 568SC, also known as duplex SC connectors in a single plastic enclosure. Also note the new small form factor MTRJ alongside the duplex SC connector. The advantages of small form factor connectors are that they are half the size of the ST and SC connectors, which results in higher density. This doubles the port density on electronics, such as switches. It also has fewer parts and much quicker installation, so it's really more affordable uh, in terms of material and labor. You must be aware of several factors that can negatively affect performance of optical fiber. These factors include first attenuation, then accept, uh, acceptance angle, total internal reflection, scattering, absorption, uh, modal dispersion, and finally chromatic dispersion. The biggest, the biggest negative factor in any fiber optic cable installation is attenuation, or the loss or decrease in power of the data carrying signal. In this case of uh, optical fiber, of course, it's the light signal. It is measured in decibels. In the real world terms, a 3 dB attenuation loss is a fiber connection uh, equal to about a 50% signal loss. And as, I, as you remember in the last module, I talked about the uh, equivalent of dB to power loss. And recall that we're talking in terms of 6 dB attenuation loss is 75% signal loss, 10 dB is a 90% signal loss, 20 dB is a 99% uh, uh, signal loss, and so on. The graph on the right shows attenuation in decibels versus percent signal loss. Notice that the relationship is exponential. The more attenuation that exists in the fiber optic cable from transmitter to receiver, the shorter the maximum distance between them. Attenuation negatively affects transmission speeds and distances of all cabling systems, but fiber optic transmissions are particularly sensitive to attenuation. 
Many different problems can cause attenuation of a light signal in optical fiber, and they include excessive gap between fibers in a connection, improperly installed connectors, impurities in the fiber, excessive bending of the cable, excessive stretching of the cable, and, uh, and finally, uh, uh, dirt on the, uh, uh, on the connector itself. Another factor that affects the performance of a fiber optic cabling system is the acceptance angle of the optical uh, fiber core. The acceptance angle, as shown in the slide, uh, uh, is, is what can accept uh, light as an input. The greater the acceptance angle difference between two or more signals in a multimode fiber, the greater the effect of modal dispersion. The modal dispersion effect also has a negative effect on the total performance of a particular cable segment. One of the most misunderstood performance factors of fiber optic is the numerical aperture, or NA. Most people ignore this value when choosing their fiber optic cable. However, it is very important, a very important performance factor, especially when splicing two optical fibers together. NA is a decimal number between 0 and 1 that reflects the ability of a particular optical fiber to accept light. The number is the result of a mathematical equation involving acceptance angles. When a light ray travels in one material, hits a different material, and reflects back into the original material without any loss of light, total internal reflection occurs. The reflection occurs because the cladding has a different index of refraction, or IR, like when sunlight is refracted off the surface of a lake. IR, or internal refra reflection, refraction, is the speed of light in a vacuum, or 186,000 miles per second, divided by the speed of light in the medium. In the case of optical fiber, the cladding has an IR of approximately 1.46, whereas the core has an internal uh, refraction of, uh, say, 1.44. So the, uh, the cladding is basically more pure than the core. Scattering is a property of glass that causes light to deflect from the fiber and contributes to optical attenuation. Some scatter light is reflected back toward the light source input in. This is a property that is used in an optical time domain reflexometer, OTDR, to test fiber optics. An OTDR is an instrument that measures transmission characteristics of sending a series of short pulses of light down a fiber and provides a graphic representation of the backscattered light. I'll talk about this more in a little bit. Absorption is the loss of light energy in an optical fiber resulting from impurities in the glass. Absorption accounts for from 3 to 5 percent of fiber attenuation. This phenomenon causes a light signal to be absorbed by natural impurities in the glass and converted to vibrational energy or some other form of energy. Multimode cables suffer from a unique problem known as modal dispersion, which is similar in effect to delay skew described in this slide relative to twisted pair cabling. Modal dispersion causes transmission delays in multimode fibers. Here's how it occurs. The modes, signals, enter the multimode fiber at various varying angles. So the signals will bounce differently inside the fiber and arrive at different times. The more severe the differences between the entrance angles, the greater the arrival time between the modes. The last fiber optic performance factor is chromatic dispersion, which limits the bandwidth of certain single-mode single optical fibers. It occurs when the various wavelengths of light spread out as they travel through an optical fiber. This happens because different wavelengths of light travel different speeds through the media. 
as they bounce through the fiber, the various wavelengths will reflect off the sides of the fibers at different angles, as shown in this particular slide. The wavelengths will spread farther and farther apart until they arrive at the destination at completely different times. As I mentioned, uh, as far as measurement is concerned, one uh, type of instrument is called the optical loss test set and the OLTS measures the total amount of loss of attenuation in a fiber optic span uh, consisting of fiber joined by connectors and splices under test, or the difference in power level of the signal measured at the transmitting and receiving ends uh, as measured in, in decibels. Bidirectional testing accounts for the decibels through the, the, uh, the attenuation in decibels through couplers, fiber core mismatches, uh, splices, and quality of connectors at each end. As I mentioned, an OTDR identifies uh, the, uh, sp and specifically locates individual events in a fiber optic span. Uh, it, it transmits pulse lights along the span in which light scattering occurs due to discontinuities uh, based on connectors, splices, bends, and faults. These cost about $30,000 a piece compared to a, uh, the previous instrument that just measures attenuation, as I mentioned, the OLTS, or the Optical Loss Test Set. This, measure, this, this is about $30,000 compared to about $1,000 for the, uh, the, the, uh, the um, OLTS. A cheaper way to test fiber, but uh, one that I always use, is a visual fault locator. The visual fault locator provides a visible, usually a red light beam, to test optical fiber cable. The visual fault locator is a valuable tool to test whether the cable is damaged or to test the, end of the cable end to end. Uh, these, these may run about five or six hundred dollars, so as you can see, uh, they're pretty uh, inexpensive by comparison to the other uh, 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 test instruments. Now in this module uh, you have learned to first identify the advantages of fiber optic, uh, fiber optic cable compared to copper cable. Then uh, you, uh, we explained multi-mode versus single mode. We discussed how fiber optic cables are constructed, explained the optimum wavelengths for fiber optic cables, and explain the performance of optical fiber cables. And finally, we briefly touched on uh, the optical fiber testing instruments. This completes Module 8. Please take Quiz 8, and I'll see you in Module 9.